Our Heavenly and Merciful Father God who loves us, thank you for giving us a great chance to study Bible together with our uh, brothers and sisters who got saved in the name of the Lord. Before that we were sinners, uh, death to hell, but now we got saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, so we are really thankful to the Lord. And as a Christian who got saved, we gather together to uh, listen to the, your message, so please open our, open our heart in front of your word so that uh, we truly understand uh, we can truly understand uh, your word and so we can get important lesson the above all the police let us uh, realize what God's will is so that uh, we may uh, obey the, your will and so we can uh, be good Christian uh, in front of you in church especially today that we are going to learn the book of Acts in the New Testament so please give us uh, knowledge and humble mind uh, so that uh, we may focus on the, what the, you are teaching to us and also that we can be strengthened spiritually and uh, that we can um, be refreshed in our heart and also that we can be used by God more. Uh, we hope that the Holy Spirit is with us from the beginning to the end. And please touch the heart of the each of brothers and sisters uh, this moment. Uh, thank you, Lord. We depend everything in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, here is open Bible. At chapter 1, verse 8. Okay, at chapter 1, verse 8. Act chapter 1 verse 8. Act chapter 1. Okay, verse 8. Okay, let's read together. But you shall receive power the when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so the, we are going to learn the book of Acts, uh, especially among the New Testament, the, among 27 books, uh, the book of Acts is very, the very difficult to understand because uh, only one history book in the New Testament is Acts, right? Yeah, so uh, because, uh, because of that uh, the book of Acts is a history book in New Testament. That's why without the historical background, uh, then the, not easy to understand the deeply and the exactly because there are so many characters, right? Yeah. So many opposers and also so many uh, names of the people and also many the names of the cities, right? Uh, so, uh, without the background, the historical background, uh, the in fact, uh, not easy to understand uh, the fully. And also not easy to teach also. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the, we have only two hours, the two hours are not uh, enough to teach. Yeah. Because the, every chapter and every verse have many lessons. And that's why... Um, so this time, uh, because of Bible Academy time, so uh, especially I would like to explain the historical background uh, to help you to understand uh, the Book of Acts. Uh, then the, whenever you read the Book of Acts, uh, I hope that uh, more easily to understand uh, the Book of Acts. So uh, even though there is a script today, but uh, I will not use the script many times, okay? So I will focus on um, the purpose of act and also background of act and the why God wrote act and then the what, can, what kind of lessons we should get. Uh, so the simply and the easily, the, we are going to think. Okay, so... Um, Okay, look at the handout. 
the introduction. Just I will just uh, uh, scan just uh, easily, simply. Yeah. Uh, do not worry. Okay. So the first, the position of Acts in the New Testament. So only book of Acts is uh, uh, only history book in the New Testament. Okay. The circle two, the early church age in Acts. Uh, around 38 years from the Holy Spirit coming to Paul's death, the church was born by the coming of the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost. It was written chapter 2, the evangelism to the Jews led by Peter and evangelism to the world led by Paul. And also in the book of Acts, the seven decons and the martyr, martyrs, the so Stephen, James, and also Apostle Paul also, uh, became the martyr. So, so we can see the three kinds of martyr and also Antioch church. The Antioch church is important so we are going to think about the Antioch church more today. Uh, the saints were called for Christian so from the Antioch church, right? The last record of uh, restoration to life in the Bible. Uh, so Dorcas the by Peter and Etiochus, the by Paul. Uh, the evangelism of the church that went through uh, the server, the persecution from Satan. And also three important salvation story. The Ethiopian eunuch, uh, so he got saved by evangelism of Philip. And also Saul. Who is Saul? The Paul, his name was changed later. And also Cornelius. So the, we can see the interesting things here. Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was the Ham's descendant. And also Saul was a descendant of the Shem. And also Cornelius was a descendant of Jabez. So do you know who are they? Yeah. The Ham's, Shem, Jabez. So the three of them uh, were the origin of the human being, right? Mankind. So it means that we can see the desire of God. Uh, he desires all men to be saved. Not only Jewish people, but also whole people. That's why as a representative, so God uh, had shown the three examples. The Ethiopian eunuch, Saul, and Cornelius. It means that uh, anyone can be saved uh, in this world. Okay, so the church grew throughout the ages in, in spite of the persecution of Satan. Okay, so can you understand? Uh, maybe you don't understand, even though I read, right? Yeah, that's natural, no problem. So I will explain it easily. So we should think about the God's work, the, the Trinity of God. Is there a new one? Black marker pen? Okay, thank you. Okay. Father God. And the Holy Spirit. Ah, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So about the salvation, uh, the Father got the plan, right? From the beginning, right? Yeah. The before beginning, the before creation, the from the beginning, he had a plan. He had prepared Jesus Christ. Then the, the what did Jesus do? He the, had achieved God's plan. And what is the role of the Holy Spirit? Apply. So Father already had a plan about salvation. God desires all men to be saved. Then who did it? 
Jesus did it, right? On the cross. Cell number 10. How can he be saved? By help of the Holy Spirit. God planned, Jesus did, and the Holy Spirit applies sinners to be saved. Just through the what Jesus has done. Okay, do, do you understand? Yeah. So without Holy Spirit, uh, no one can be saved because the Holy Spirit will help the listeners who repent uh, to be saved. Okay, okay, do you understand? Yeah. So, the, what is the book of Acts? So we call this the act of church. Act of the Holy Spirit. The what is the working of the Holy Spirit? Then we come to know through the book of Acts. The what he is doing. The what is the most important the work of the Holy Spirit? Huh? Have you ever thought? Or healing disease? Or helping sinners to be saved. What is the most important work of the Holy Spirit? Hmm. The helping sinners to realize what Jesus has done. Okay, do you understand? Holy Spirit the helps sinners what God's plan is. Yeah. John chapter 6, 14, the will of Father, will of Father God is eternal life. And who had, a, who had a, uh, achieved? Jesus Christ. Then how to realize? Through help of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, John 16, He will send another helper. Right? Who is the helper? Holy Spirit. Then how to know about that? Through the book of Acts. Yeah. So, uh, about the name of the Holy Spirit, this letter, about the word of Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, 49 times uh, Holy Spirit, the word of Holy Spirit are uh, written in the book of Acts. So we can see this word 49 times in the book of Acts. Uh, why? Because the book of Acts is an uh, act of Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? Salvation. Okay, do you understand? So if we know this concept, uh, the more easy to understand uh, the book of Acts. Yeah. So, okay. This is more easy to you, right? Uh, please answer. Yes, okay, thank you. So, um, so please open your Bible, Acts chapter 2. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit. So especially Acts chapter 2 verse 46, 47, uh, I will find these two verses several times. So much better to hold this chapter. Acts chapter 2 verse 46 to 47. Yeah. The very clear to understand what Holy Spirit is doing yeah, through these verses. Okay, 46 to 47. Okay, let's read together. 3, 2, 1. So, continuing daily, the with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with uh, gladness and uh, simplicity of heart, the praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So, whoever is hungry uh, will focus on Food. Yeah, food, right? Yeah. Are you hungry? Maybe many didn't have a dinner, right? It's me too. So because uh, are you hungry? Yeah. So easily we can see food here, right? Food. Breaking bread from house to house. They ate their food. So uh, 
The 46, 47, because they had one mind and also they gathered together uh, with one heart. So what happened? The many got saved. Yeah, this is a work of the Holy Spirit. This is act of the Holy Spirit. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. This is a real work of the Holy Spirit. Even though the many have experienced the wonders and the miracles, but if no one got saved, there is not work of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I say? Because according to the Bible, if you read the book of Acts from chapter 1 until chapter 28, you come to know that the what? Work of the Holy Spirit. What is it? Salvation of lost souls. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, book of Acts is very important. Okay, page 2. So Acts chapter 9 verse 31. It's okay to open your Bible also. So if the work of the, uh, if the Holy Spirit works in church, what will happen? Acts chapter 9 verse 31. Acts chapter 9 verse 31. Let's read together. Then the churches throughout all Judea Galilee and the Samaria had peace and were edified and the working in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit they were multiplied. Another translation version uh, through the courage of the Holy Spirit. Also in New King James Version uh, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit it means that the Holy Spirit will compel the heart of the Christian who was saved, and then the Holy Spirit will push Christian to deliver gospel. So many got saved. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. But uh, many have a misunderstanding that the many focus on the miracles. Huh? Yeah. So if someone uh, can perform miracle, uh, they praise him that. The one who is filled with the Holy Spirit visit in our city. What is being filled with the Holy Spirit? If real Christian is filled with the Holy Spirit through him, many will be saved. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You understand? Yeah. So, without salvation, there is not is uh, the high possibility that, uh, that, that that is not the, whole, the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at the handout, number three, the writer, the look. Uh, so it, or, some bra many brothers already know that uh, Luke wrote uh, Gospel of Luke and Act. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe nearly brother and sister who got saved, uh, someone uh, the main know that the book of Acts uh, was written by Apostle Paul because Apostle Paul is a main character in the book of Acts, but uh, Luke the Lord. And also, who is a receiver? The one person. Yeah. The Theophilus. So, the Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke and also book of Acts for one person. So, so, we can find out the common thing between Luke and Act. Many chapters, right? The how many chapters of the Luke? 24 chapters. How many chapters of Act? 28 chapters. All in all, 52 chapters. And also, each chapter is short or long? Long. So, uh, the, we can see the passion of Luke. For one person, for one person, he wrote like this. How many times did, uh, did you talk with an unbeliever, with one person? How many things did you share? How many times did you talk with one person? 
until he gets saved, what kind of effort you have? For one person, for one person to be saved, the Luke wrote wrong letter. How many chapters are we in all? 52 chapters. So in fact, uh, in earlier church, the Gospel of Luke and Act were one book. One book. But uh, uh, clearly, these two books can be uh, separated. That's why later, that one book became two books. The Gospel of Luke and Act. But at first, uh, the Christian had the one book. Luke and Act. Because uh, this was written by one person, Luke, for one person, Theophilus. Uh, let's look at the Bible, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So, who is a receiver? Uh, Theophilus. And please open Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 3, Luke chapter 1, verse 3, Luke chapter 1, verse 3, let's read together. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very uh, first to write to you on the orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. So, a receiver of a look and act of same, right? So, for one person. So, we can see passion uh, of look. For one person. For one lost soul. He did his best. So, this is a very important lesson to Christian, right? So whenever we evangelize lost souls, what should we do? So we should do our best for one person. Even though, even though we should, uh, even though we need uh, much budget, even though we should pay much amount, but if he can be saved, we should do. No one can say that how wasteful, right? For one person, if we use 100,000 pesos, that's why if he can be saved, we should use. Am I right? Is it wasteful? To save the one person, we must not use our money? A pastor, only one person. How wasteful. Don't do that. Can you say? No. We should do all for one person. For me, what did Jesus do? He died, right? For me, for one person, he died. Even though every people are righteous and also I am only sinner, Jesus will not die. Jesus can say that only you are sinner, but another are already righteous. I will not die because I, I don't want to die for you. Only one. He will say like that. No. Even though sinner is only me, will he die or not? Oh, please answer. Will Jesus die or not? You don't know? Will Jesus die or not? He will die. Then, during Bible seminar, only one person is listening. That's why we don't need to sacrifice. We don't need to pray. We don't need to do our best because only one is listening. Can we ignore him? If he knows about that, oh, many brothers and sisters are ignoring me because only me is listening. If he knows about that, we must do our best anytime. Even though many are listening, even though only one is listening, all of them are precious. 
in front of God. Right? So look, only one person, he did his best. How precious. The impact, if we, do, if we can do our best for one person, God will send many lost souls to you. But uh, if you ignore one lost soul, God will not allow many lost souls. Why? God does not want to see that uh, the failed evangelism. Please think about In front of God, there are two Christians. One Christian is faithful in everything, even one lost soul. He does his best. But another Christian, because of the only one lost souls, he does not pray, he does not sacrifice, he ignores. He only one. Then later, God wants to evangelize 100 persons. To whom will God send? The Christian who ignores one person or Christian uh, does his best for one person? If you are God, whom do you want to use? Well, maybe we want to use the one Christian who is faithful for one rosary, right? What kind of church can evangelize? Where? Sometimes, according to Bible seminar, participants are changeable. Sometimes many are listening, sometimes only few are listening. Especially the when only few are listening, we should remember that time is important chance to be tested by God. Sometimes God will send few members. At the time, if we are faithful, God will be pleased. Even few listeners, wonderful. You have one mind even for few lost souls. You sacrifice even for few lost souls. Okay, later I will send many lost souls. As a church, as each Christian, same. Very important. If you read the book of Acts, it doesn't matter how many are listening. Even few Members who are listening, Christian, they did their best. For example, Acts chapter 16. Who got saved? One sister got saved. Sister Lydia. For one sister, Apostle Paul, he did his best. Nearby the river, several women that listened to the Bible seminar. Only one got saved. So can you ignore his evangelism? Ah, only one got saved. Ah, not good evangelism. Can you say like that? From Sister Lydia, great church was established. Philippi church. And for one person, Ethiopian eunuch, from Jerusalem going to Gaza, the Philip was sent by God for one person. Do you know the when he was sent by God? When Philip evangelized many people in Samaria, at that time many got saved according to the Bible. But at that time, even though many are listening to the Bible seminar in Samaria from the Philip, but he got called Philip for one person. So did Philip reject? Oh Lord, because of me, many are listening here. Should I go there for only one person? I cannot. Did he reject? Because number is only one? No, he obeyed. He went to Gaza quickly and he met Ethiopian eunuch and he evangelized and he got saved. But the Ethiopian eunuch was not one person. Why? After his salvation, when he returned to Ethiopia, he evangelized. So, in fact, according to the Christianity history, there were many Christians in Ethiopia.
So if we read the book of Acts, we can see the passion of Christians. Even few members, even one person. The when Holy Spirit will work, the when we do our best, even for one person. At the time, the Holy Spirit will work perfectly. But because of the number of listeners, if we reduce sacrifice, if we, if, we, if we reduce the prayer, if we don't do our best, God will snatch the chance of evangelism and also God will give another to evangelize. So we can see uh, this lesson here. Okay. So, uh, about the look, so we have learned um, about that, the last, um, the Bible account time, the when we had learned the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke. So, please keep. Uh, page 3. The age of writing, the AD 16 to uh, 63, the because of the Neronian, the persecution of Christian. So AD 64, so Paul's death, AD 68, and the destruction of Jerusalem, AD 17. Yeah, so much better to know this, the historical timetable. Uh, mm. And number five, key point, the key word, church and Holy Spirit uh, and salvation and glory. Yeah. So... Mm. So well, someone can say that the book of Acts is the act of the apostles, but uh, biblically, the, we should understand like this. Uh, Acts is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And also, Acts of That's of the church. So this is a connecting because Holy Spirit is working through church. So to understand uh, easily and exactly the Book of Acts, the we should know this concept. Ah, Book of Acts is act of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to know what He is doing, we should learn Book of Acts. And also, if we want to know what church is, we should learn Book of Acts. Okay, do you understand? And also, it means that as a Christian who got saved, we should, we should learn about the Holy Spirit and also church. This is very important. And also, especially without church, no one can grow, no one can be used by God, no one can evangelize powerfully. The very, very, very important. The special need church. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. The God that has purchased the church with his blood, right? So God bought church with his blood. So church is very precious and important because church was uh, bought by God uh, through His blood. So this is very important. So, uh, the, the, we should learn about that. So key word is the church and uh, Holy Spirit. Okay, so key, key theme, the how the church begins and how the church grows, how the church accomplish the mission. So key point is church. So this is very important. And then the overview of it. Okay. Mm, if you look at the, this table, not easy to understand. So I will just explain. Okay, look at the white ball.
The how many chapters? Book of Act? Yeah, 28. So chapter 1 until chapter 12, the main character is Peter. And chapter 13 until 28, main character is Paul. And also, uh, among the 12 chapters, uh, at the chapter 9, you can see salvation of Apostle Paul. Okay? So, in chapter 1 until chapter 12, you can see the beginning of a church. And also, chapter 13 to 28, you can see expansion of a church. And also, chapter number 12, the Peter evangelized in Jerusalem for Israel. And from chapter 13 to 28, the gospel was delivered to another nation for world. Because God had promised that uh, gospel will be delivered until the end of the earth. So at chapter one verse 18, you should be a witness of Christ yeah, from Judea, Samaria, and whole uh, until the end of the earth. And before Jesus ascended to heaven, also he commanded to his disciples, go and preach the gospel huh? yeah. to the world. So, so we can divide in two parts, chapter 1 to 12 and chapter 13 to 28. Yeah. And chapter 1, uh, the, we can see the what is teaching of apostles. And also chapter 20, 28 also, we can see the what is their teaching. And also, if you read the chapter 28, uh, the end style is, the clothing style is not like another Bible. Uh, for example, the, if you read the Ephesians, or Philippians, or Ephesians, Colossians, about the epistles, which were written by Apostle Paul, so you can see closing meant, closing meant. For example, I hope that the grace and the love of Christ the will be with you. Amen. Something like that. But the, if you read the Acts chapter 28, there is no closing meant. Open close. So we can see open close. What does it mean? The chapter 29 is still going on through church. It means that act of the Holy Spirit is not finished yet. His work will finish when Jesus returns. Okay? Yeah. So chapter 29 is still going on. So then, what is the main teaching about, about their message? Please open your Bible, chapter 1. Act chapter 1. The verse 3. Act chapter 1, verse, chapter one, verse uh, 3. Okay, let's read it together. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, the being seen by them the during forty days, and the speaking of the things that pertaining to the kingdom of God. What kind of thing did they teach about the kingdom of God, about the kingdom of God, about the heavenly thing, about the way to heaven? Right? About the way to heaven, right? Yeah. Not earthly things, about the heavenly thing. And last chapter, Acts chapter 28. 28, verse, last verse, 31. 31. Okay, let's read together. The preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence to one the providing uh, him. So, the kingdom of God. 
So chapter 1 verse 3 about kingdom of God. Chapter 28 verse 31 about kingdom of God. So, uh, so what are we teaching now? About what? About the earthly thing in this world? Or about the heavenly thing? About the kingdom of God? About kingdom of God. The when one uh, the uh, the thief the war, uh, the was the crucified the beside of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The he asked Jesus, remember me. The when you go to the your kingdom, right? What did he focus on? The worldly kingdom and heavenly kingdom. Kingdom of heaven, right? Yeah. So like that. So this is the main teaching of the apostles at the time. Mm. And also, uh, please look at uh, this table here. So, the, this table, the from chapter 1 until chapter 2, beginning of a church, and chapter 3 to 8, growth of a church, and chapter 8 to 13, expansion of a church, and so we can uh, divide two parts. Chapter 1 until chapter 12 is one part. So also about the first part can be divided in two parts like this. But uh, mainly, so main character is Peter. And from chapter 13 to 28, the main character was Apostle Paul. So we can see about that. And the place... Chapter 1 to 12, uh, chapter 1 to 7, uh, main place is Jerusalem. And chapter 8 to 12, main place uh, is Judea and Samaria. And chapters, from chapter 13 to 28, place is whole world. So, let's look at the chapter 1 verse 8. The gospel uh, has been achieved. At chapter 1. So we can see God's plan here. At chapter 1, verse 8. Okay, let's read together. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, and in whole Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So from chapter 1 until 7, the main place of evangelism is Jerusalem. And also from chapter 8 until chapter 12, main place of evangelism is Judea and Samaria. According to the chapter 1 verse 8. And also main place uh, of evangelism the from chapter 13 to last chapter is another nation. Overall the mission. So we can see expansion of gospel, right? From Jerusalem and Judea Samaria, and the end of the earth. Yeah. So this is the work of the Holy Spirit. This is act of the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at me. Look at me. So here in Philippines, we're saying, yeah. one church was established in Philippines, right? Some Filipino got saved. From them, gospel was this delivered to another Iceland, another city, another barangay, another region, right? So every year, churches are being huh, set up now, right? This is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Acts chapter 1 verse 8, from Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and the end of the earth. So if one person got saved, his family got saved later, right? And his neighbors got saved, right? 
and also keep some friends or relatives who are living another place got saved. And also sometimes that gospel can be delivered to another nation. So you know, the uh, one Korean sister, the, he got saved, and then he had a plan to go to the abroad. In the airplane, she evangelized another foreigner. So she evangelized in airplane. In, in the in the air. At that time, that nation, there were no our churches. Inside the airplane, the one sister evangelized, and then from that time, they were connecting. They contact each other. So that the one foreigner got saved, and then I don't know she was she, he was she. Anyway, the Christian evangelized his family and neighbors. So many churches were established there. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Here in Philippines also. Here in Negros Oriental, or the Negros Iceland and Bisaya region, same way. If one God really say, gospel will spread. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. How? Through church. Do you understand? The church is the place where the Holy Spirit works. So this wonderful story is still going on in our generation. Oh, how amazing. And also, God already had a plan about the salvation. God plan salvation, and so uh, God had promised many things from Abraham, right? So the many will be blessed. From you, Genesis chapter 12. And also, Old Testament were written. And according to the God's promise, the Jesus Christ will come and also he died on the cross and he had achieved salvation. And also he ascended to heaven and according to his promise, the Holy Spirit that came into the world at the day of the Pentecost. Yeah. Acts chapter 1. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. The 1, 2, 4. Okay, let's read together. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And uh, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of the rushing, the mighty wind, the, white, uh, the mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Uh, then there appeared to them the divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Yeah. So, Holy Spirit came. Yeah. Because God had promised that after ascension of Jesus Christ, uh, at the 50th day, Holy Spirit will come. So this promise was achieved. And from that time, the age of church had begun, right? And uh, the, through the church, so the many uh, got saved. Hmm? This is the work of the uh, Holy Spirit. Yeah, through the church, Okay, page 4. Okay, 
Okay, uh, look at here. Okay, so uh, the from the beginning, God had a plan about the salvation, right? And at the time, Jesus, Jesus did it, right? And after coming of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit apply the what Jesus has done through the words of God. So through the help of the Holy Spirit, the sinners got saved. Okay, yeah. so through the church. Okay, page four. Page four. So chapter 1 until 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit, chapter 3 to 6, early church in Jerusalem, chapter 7, uh, martyrdom of Stephen, chapter 8, the mission in Samaria, uh, chapter 9, the salvation of Paul and the mission, chapter 10, evangelism to Gentile. The Cornelius was the first Gentile person who got saved, right? And also chapter 11 to 12, Antioch church, chapter 13 to 14, the Paul's first missionary journey, 15. The council in Jerusalem, the 16 to 18. The Paul's second missionary journey, 19 to 21. Paul's third missionary journey, chapter 22 to 26. Uh, Paul who became prisoner, 27 to 28. The voyage of Paul to Rome. So, uh, according to the uh, the teachers. Um, so someone can say that the first missionary journey, second missionary journey, and also third missionary journey, and last journey guy, just uh, the voyage of Paul to Rome. But also someone can say, also this is the fourth missionary journey. And in the Rome, also, also he had evangelized more. So someone, some, somebody can say that uh, also fifth, the missionary journey. Uh, the, the, so normally, so just we are saying first missionary journey, second and third missionary journey, and uh, when he was going to Rome, so we can say just the missionary journey, the voyage of Paul uh, to Rome. Okay, so main message in Acts. Uh, just uh, the read uh, in your heart when I read. God has made the grand plan of redeeming the lost sinner since Adam has fallen and Jesus has accomplished that grand plan of the cross by shedding his precious blood. And now the Holy Spirit whom God already had planned to send begins his ministry of testifying of Jesus and guiding the same people while dwelling in them. We see the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus because Jesus had promised Missing that he will send a uh, helper. So John chapter 14, verse 16. Yeah. At the beginning, I said John chapter 16. Yeah. Correction, chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, helper is... The Holy Spirit. The helper, the Holy Spirit, to whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. So Holy Spirit will teach. The Holy Spirit will teach what Jesus has done, right? So, Mm. Uh, long typing here in the book, that blood. In the book of Acts, uh, we can see how the church begins yeah, by coming of the Holy Spirit. How the church is growing and expanding yeah. uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit. And what is the mission of the church? Preaching the gospel and saving souls. And how many opposition and the persecutions are waiting for the church? Mm. Now let's think about this again. 
because uh, the main topic of act is Holy Spirit and Church. So to understand about that, let's think about the historical background. Uh, uh, please open the script. Uh, page ten. I already explained to you uh, from chapter 1 until 12, the main evangelism was the Peter's uh, evangelism. And from chapter 13 to 28, uh, who is main character? Apostle? Paul. Yeah. Even though you don't remember another thing, but if you remember this thing today, uh, then more easily to understand the book of Acts. So, for example, if you read the chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, ah, uh, until chapter 12, main character is Peter. And if you started to read from chapter 13, just remind, uh, main character is Paul. Okay? Yeah. And also, until chapter 12, uh, in Jerusalem. And from chapter 13, another uh, plains. Huh? Okay? So, and also, uh, after ascension of Jesus Christ, uh, because Peter was the best disciple among the twelve disciples, right? Because he really loved Jesus, rather than another disciples. That's why, to establish earlier church, who was used by God first? His apostle, Peter. This is very important. Even though he denied Jesus three times, but he repented. And also, he really loved Jesus. So, what is the last chapter before act? What is the, what is the book before act? John, right. So, last, we have the last month. So which one is the last chapter? 21, right. And what is the last Conversation between Jesus and Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? Rather than other things? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus testified about his love. So it wasn't proven that Peter really loved Jesus, right? Because his answer was true. But before, uh, Mm. The, he said to Jesus that I will uh, follow you always. At the time, did Jesus accept what Peter said? No. Jesus said, you will deny me three times. His answer was wrong. But chapter 21, John chapter 21, his answer was true. That's why Jesus answered, feed the flock. So, who can be used by God? We can get lesson. Who can be used by God? Those who are educated way? Peter was not educated way. He was just fisherman. Those who have a good job? He had no job when he was called by God, right? He lived his sheep and net. So those who have money? He had no money. He was so poor. Then who can be used by God? Those who love God. This is the first qualification. Who can evangelize? Have you ever thought? Those who have uh, much time? Those who have uh, vacant time? Ah, he has no job, so much better to evangelize. 
but I have a job. So it's not easy to have any lies. Oh, he is very near to church. I am very far from church. So I cannot have any lies because I am far. This cannot be condition for having this. What is important? Love. If I love the Lord, we can do everything. Distance is not a problem if I love the Lord. Money is not a problem if I love the Lord. Time is not a problem if I love the Lord. Do you understand? We need God's love. What is the most important base for evangelism? God's love. Even though we have much time, even though we have much money, even though we have much talent, but without love, we cannot evangelize. Peter really loved Jesus. So if you read Acts chapter 1, from chapter 1, who evangelized publicly? Huh? Who? Peter. Please open Bible, Acts chapter 2. So this can be a good uh, lesson to us. Chapter 2, verse 14. We can see boldness of Peter. 14. Okay. 14, let's read it together. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. How brave! In front of religious people, in front of the Israel people who believe in God, in front of Pharisees, in front of the scribes, in front of Bible teachers, he became brave. Why? Because of love. Do you know the, how to evangelize bravely? How to evangelize boldness without shame? If we love God, we can be brave. And verse 36. This is a sermon of Peter. 36. Let me read. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom he was crucified, both the Lord and Christ. Verse 37. This is the message of Peter. Verse 37. Let's read together. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? What, what kind of response here? Yeah, because uh, Peter preached the gospel boldly, many people repenting. How wonderful evangelism. God used him. Verse 14, let's read it together. And with many other words, he testified and uh, exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So what happened? Verse 41, let's read it together. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. How many got saved? 3,000. Thousand. How wonderful evidence, right? What is the key point? God's love. He really loved God rather than another thing. Only God is in his heart. That's why he could receive power of the Holy Spirit. Even though I am so active to have lines, but if I love another thing first, rather than God, we cannot get the power of the Holy Spirit. 
That's why very difficult to see the result. Possible thing will be impossible if we love another thing rather than God. But if we love God, impossible thing will be possible. This is very important. If you don't believe what I say, please love God first. Then you can understand what I am saying. But if you love another thing rather than God, you cannot understand until you love God first. If you really evangelize, if you really want to save your family, who want to say, please love God first. Then God will help you. Throw away every kind of evil from your life. Then you can see the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit, holy. That's why without holiness, He never works. Without holiness, He never works. We can bring, we can invite with man's power. But for salvation, we need power of the Holy Spirit. Even though I have a hidden sin, we can invite, we can evangelize, we can bring many people inside the church building, even though I have a hidden sin. But remember, there is no work of the Holy Spirit. Our purpose is not to make Religious people who are going to church building only. We should help them to be saved through the Holy Spirit. What is our purpose? To make religious men? To add numbers inside church building? Unbelievers can do it, right? What is the purpose of Bible seminar? Gathering many people to attend church? No, to save them. Then what do we need? Work of the Holy Spirit. Then how to how does he work? Through holiness. Because he is Holy Spirit. The Peter was holy. That's why he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible said, be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? How to be filled with the Holy Spirit? We should be holy. Then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to evangelize? Yeah. Through God's love. Through holiness. Then Holy Spirit will work. But we can see example here. So many got saved. And also, let's think about Peter was trained. Uh, well, this is just uh, uh, no, what I am thinking. Uh, even though he was not educated well, but uh, he already passed the one important course. What? Uh, the Galilee School. <laughs> what is the Galilee School? Uh, he was educated from Jesus directly, right? Another religious people, they were educated by their own teachers. But Peter was educated by Jesus. So to be used by God, we need a training time. He was educated, he was trained by Jesus. He had learned always from Jesus. Whenever Jesus taught the Bible, always Peter was there. Please think about, did he absent Solomon time of Jesus? Or have you ever thought? I think the more, more 12 disciples, 100% attendance, but among them who listened the Solomon carefully, maybe Peter, right? That's why he became best disciple. He was best listener. In church, who can be used by God? Best listener. In front, from the in front. Always concentration. Every ceremony. They can change. They can be changed. They can be used by God. According to the attitude of listening, our future will be different. Why the God 
Jesus used Peter. He was best listener. Always he was beside Jesus. Whenever P Jesus taught the Bible, Peter was beside. That's why if you read the first Peter, second Peter, his sermon is not the his ceremony is uh, very wonderful. Why? He taught what he had learned from Jesus. Please read the first Peter, second Peter carefully. What did he teach? He taught what he had learned from Jesus. How? He had listened carefully. The good listeners can be good Christian. Right? Very important. And also, so uh, if you look at this table, So during the Peter, the head evangelized, yeah. at time, uh, during the Peter evangelized in Israel, God had also another plan. Uh, God wanted to evangelize Rome. Because at that time, uh, maybe if you don't know about the background of this, this historical background, you, someone can have a misunderstanding. At that time, Rome was not a small nation. Almost whole Europe was conquered by Rome. Okay? Rome is, just, uh, like, uh, Rome is not like uh, just one small nation. Question, where did Apostle Paul evangelize? Inside Rome only. Oh, Pastor Dayan, where is uh, Ephesus and Philippi and Corinto? That area was under Rome. The Philippi, Ephesus uh, were just uh, cities belong to Rome. Okay, do you understand? Yeah. Someone has a misunderstanding. Ah, the Paul had visited many nations, but at that time, that place was conquered by Rome. Uh, okay, do you understand? Yeah. Ephesus, the one city of Rome. Okay. Uh, now, because Rome and the empire were, uh, was uh, dis destructive, right? That's why the nations were divided now. But at that time, one nation, Rome. So God has a plan to open the door of faith in Rome. Why? Through Rome, gospel can be delivered. So during the evidence of Peter, God had prepared the one uh, person, Apostle Paul. So if you read the chapter 9, the Apostle Paul got saved, right? At the uh, Damascus. Hmm? So he got saved. And then, but uh, he was not trained with yet. So since he got saved, he went to the Arabia. So he stayed there for three years. So we don't know what did he do. Maybe uh, he studied the Bible again. Yeah. So it means that without training, without studying Bible, no one can be saved. Uh, no one can be used by God. Someone tried to evangelize, but uh, he is not willing to study the Bible. Very dangerous. If we got saved, what should we do? We should study the Bible with a humbleness. This is very important. Uh, Acts chapter 2. So the, when Peter evangelized, the many got saved. After their salvation, what did they do? They started to study the Bible. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 42.
Okay, 41 to 42, let's read together, 3, 2, 1. Yes, what did they do after salvation? Or 42, and they continued to steadfastly in the, in the opposers' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in prayers. What did they do after salvation? They had learned. They had learned the Bible, okay? So, okay, give me. So please open the page 10. Then here, you can see that uh, 34 AD, at the time the Peter, uh, Apostle Paul, got saved. And until 37 AD, he stayed in Arabia. And also until uh, 44 to 46, he was assigned in the Antioch. And from 47, uh, he was sent by God as a missionary. Okay, this is very important. Okay, look at me. We can see uh, the growth of uh, one Christian and growth of church. The growth of Christian, growth of church are connected, okay? If church does not grow, Christians also cannot grow. If Christian cannot grow, church also cannot grow, okay? This is very important. Okay, look at me. Uh, the 34 AD, the Paul got saved. At the time, the Peter evangelized powerfully. So even though he evangelized powerfully, Apostle Paul, even though he got saved, he needed training. So he stayed in Arabia for three years uh, until uh, 37. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so until, until uh, the 46 AD, So, almost for 13 years, yeah, include the ministry in Antioch, the before he was sent by God as a missionary. For 13 years, at the time, for 13 years, Peter preached the gospel. And for 13 years, Apostle Paul was trained by God. So this is very important. To be used by God, we need a training. Moses, how many years he was trained in wilderness? 40 years, right? After 40 years, he was sent by God to Egypt. Also, Apostle Paul also, he was trained for 13 years, all in all. So, so, we must not ignore about that. If you really want to be used by God, you should be trained. We should pass suffering, affliction, persecution. And also, you should study the Bible. You should read the Bible. You should pray. You should learn many things. And then, you can be used by God more precious. So, the Bible Academy time, well, not only Bible Academy time, but also uh, Sunday ceremony, Wednesday ceremony, well, Sacred Fellowship, Young the Fellowship, every fellowship time are very important for you. So for 13 years, he had learned the Bible again. And also, the, he had learned Jesus again. Because before he got saved, he was Bible teacher, right? Uh, he was the best person. He had many knowledge about the Bible, but after salvation, he had learned the Bible again from the base. So after 13 years, what happened? Yeah. At the time, Antioch Church was established and Antioch Church was uh, growing. Please open Bible. Uh, at Chapter three, 
13. So please open Bible ch chapter 11 for us. 11. So uh, Antioch Church was established there. Chapter 11, verse 22, 20, uh, 19, sorry, 19, from 19, the so let me read. Now those who were, uh, okay, please look at me. So you can see the work of the Holy Spirit here. Uh, please uh, think about the work of, work of the Holy Spirit when you read. Okay, let me read. Verse 19, now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen, traveled as far as the uh, Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, yeah. preaching the word, of, word to no one but the Jews only. And verse 20, but some of them were men from Cyprus and uh, Sidon, who when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, the preaching the Lord Jesus. So in Antioch, uh, they were Hellenists, yeah, the Gentiles. Verse 21, let's read together. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and uh, turned to the Lord. Yes, so uh, because of the work of the Holy Spirit, what happened? Many got saved there. Uh, the Antioch um, also Antioch also there was a great city in Rome. Okay, Antioch was a third city, third, third. So where is the third city in Philippines? Do you know? And according to the uh, Brother Caesar's answer is different. Or someone say Otaba, or someone say Musibu. Where is the third city in Philippines? Because I don't know exactly. Tomaiti? Anyway, so uh, Antioch also was a very big city. But why God opened the city of Antioch first? Antioch. Inside Antioch, Many foreign, foreigners were living there. Not only Jewish people, but also foreigners. Why God opened there? God has a plan to deliver gospel to another nation. So that's why here, Hellenist. Yeah. The foreigners, right? Okay, look at me. Uh, we, we should think about uh, I already removed. We should think about the God's plan amazingly. Yeah. Because uh, today I will focus on the historical background. Uh, but do not be afraid, there is no exam. The New uh, Old Testament was written by uh, uh, the prophet the, in, the, in the Old Testament. The, what is the language? Hebrews, right? Hebrews, right? Hebrews. And New Testament, what is the language? Greek. Greek. So when Apostle Paul evangelized in Rome, or Antioch and Rome, uh, or Epheso and Corinto, at the time, anyway, the New Testament were not complete, right? So how did he evangelize? Old Testament. Apostles had evangelized with Old Testament, okay? Because the New Testament were, were not complete. But the problem is, Hebrews is very difficult to foreigners. Amazingly, before Israel, people, before Israel was conquered by Rome, what was nation? Greeks, right? Greek. Greece. At the time, the one king he commanded to translate the Bible in Greek in advance. That's why when 
Peter, uh, when Paul evangelized already, there is a translation version. How wonderful. God already ready. God already prepared. And also, 80, 70 years, uh, And also, uh, the, when the Israel people were conquered by Rome, uh, their way to rule over the Israel people is that uh, they scattered many Israel people to many cities of Rome. Uh, they scattered the many Israel people. Yeah. Because the Rome, the Rome Empire, the empire is, a, is a huge nation, right? So uh, many Jewish people were scattered to many places. So what did they do? They made synagogue. Do you know the synagogue? Synagogue is a place where they uh, study the Bible. So any man can teach. That's why Jesus also was able to teach there. Because any man can teach there among the Israel people. Okay? So already, many Israel people built synagogue in many cities. That's why when Apostle Paul visited each city, already there was synagogue. There is a place to teach the Bible. God used Rome to deliver gospel. Also, the we can get lesson here. For two years, also more still going on, in whole nation, uh, whole the world, the there is the pandemic, right? Can God use pandemic for gospel or not? Huh? Can God use the virus for gospel or not? He, God, use Rome for gospel. So, the, in fact, during the pandemic, many churches were established here in Philippines, right? Because of pandemic, no, not easy to move to another city. That's why many brothers and sisters are sending a DVD player and a DVD file to another city, to family and relatives. Because of that, many mission branches were established, you know? Because of the, the Rome, Israel people were scattered by enforcement, by persecution, uh, by tribulation. But there, they built synagogue for studying Bible. So already set up uh, for evangelism. Also Antioch also, that place was a very important place because many uh, kinds of foreigners were there. So if some got saved, he can deliver gospel, his hometown, right? Yeah. That's why God focused it, Antioch. So whenever we Bible seminar, whenever we conduct Bible seminar on another place, and whenever we evangelize on another place, we should think about what God's plan is. We should think about God's plan. Then God will show and God will offer for the good evangelism. So we should think about also. So, the why the verse 22, Jerusalem church have heard the, their uh, Situation. Ah, many got saved and many gathered. But problem is, no preacher. So also we can see the importance of preacher here. Without preacher, church cannot grow. So even though many got saved, no teacher. That's why what happened? They are not able to learn. So verse 22. Then news of these things came to the ear, ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. So as a, like a short-term missionary, he was sent by God because they should learn. Without learning, without learning they can grow and also they can be influenced by other doctrine. And then one mind can be broken easily. Then gospel cannot be spread fast. 
That's why the Jerusalem church had decided to send preacher, the Barnabas. Dili Barabbas, not Barabbas. Barabbas is murderer. We should pronounce it well. Barnabas. Okay, so, so verse 23. When he came and had been the grace of God, he was glad. So Barnabas went there, but he was so glad. How wonderful situation. Why he was glad? Why the Barnabas was glad? Why? Why? Have you ever thought? Why Barnabas was glad? Because the brothers and sisters in Antioch, they were really willing to listen. They were ready to listen. They had a passion to listen. They had a passion to have in their lives. That's why when Barnabas went to there, he was glad. Do you know which church can grow? The church who is willing to listen. The church who is willing to evangelize. Even though there are many difficulties, even though there are many persecutions, this is very, very, very important. Even though the members are many, but if they are not willing to listen, that church cannot grow. Barnabas was so glad. I'm sorry to another churches. Uh, it's sometimes, well, nowadays, already starting rotating pulpit. According to churches, reactions are different. Some churches, yeah, I cannot say who they are, very willing to listen. We, preacher can feel. Preacher can feel. They are willing to listen. At that time, I am very glad for them. Wow, how good willing. No one sleeping. They are willing to listen. Yes, that church can grow well. I visited that church long ago. That church became a great church now. But another church, not willing. I feel that some brothers and sisters are boring. <laughs> they are checking the watch. The church is still saying, we should get the lesson here. Why Antioch church became a great church? Why Barnabas was glad? Because they were willing to listen. They were willing to study Bible. They were willing to know Jesus. This is a very important. So attitude of the listeners are very important. So attitude of listeners can change church. Very true. So when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad. So he saw the grace of God. And so he saw the situation of uh, brethren in uh, Antioch and encouraged them all that with the purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. So verse 24, what happened? Let's read together. 3 to 1. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Great, the many people were added to the Lord. So verse 26, let's read together. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they uh, assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called 
Christians in Antioch. So name of Christian uh, was from Antioch Church. They were called by another people. Ah, they are Christians. Why? Because their life is like Christ. So, what happened? Uh, not only numbers, but also their faith was growing. So, what happened? From verse 27 is very important. What did they do? What did they do? From verse 27. Remember it? And in these days, Prophet came from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them, named Agabus, Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be great famine throughout all the world, which, was, uh, which also happened in the days of the uh, Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, disciples of Antioch, the disciples, each according to his ability, determined, determined to offer it. The determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea because there was big famine. Yeah. Yeah, look at me. What happened? Antioch was like a mission branch before. Mission branch of Jerusalem church. So Jerusalem church uh, helped Antioch. Jerusalem church sent preacher, and Jerusalem church also supported physically, finished. But later, big famine came to Jerusalem. So many brothers and sisters in Jerusalem were suffered because of the famine. No food, no money. So who helped them? Antioch church. This is uh, evidence that they grew. Not only in numbers. But also quality. Their quality, the group, their faith, they sacrifice. How wonderful, right? Antioch church was more smaller church than Jerusalem. But they have main church. So, Later, what happened? Verse chapter 13. Yeah. From chapter 13, uh, ministry of Apostle Paul started, right? From where? From Antioch. Antioch church is very important. Why? They sent Apostle Paul to Oberon. Just small church at first. But uh, that church became a great church. And later, they helped Jerusalem church. And later, chapter 13, they sent Apostle Paul. So through the Apostle Paul, how many churches were established? So many churches were established, right? So whenever Apostle Paul evangelized, who prayed for him? Huh? Who prayed for him? Antioch Church. Why? They sent him. Through him, many churches were established in Rome. How wonderful. This is the reason why we should grow. If we grow, we can enlarge the territory of God's but without growth, we cannot do. How can baby do like others, right? Baby should grow first. So we need the growth. So through the book of Acts, we can see growth of church. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Why is our work of the Holy Spirit? Not only evangelism. But also, growth of a church. Are you growing now? It means that 
There is a work of the Holy Spirit. Church is growing. Not only number, models, or qualities. In fact, quality is more important. Which church is a good church? Which church is a good church? The church who has a faith and love. That church is a good church. So, faith of a church is more important rather than size. Because according to the cities, population are different, right? So, so if we can say that only greater number of churches is the best church, every local church should shut down. Right? Because according to population, percentage are different, right? Which church is a good church? Efficient, chapter 1. Chapter 5, chapter 1, verse 15. Uh, efficient church was also a good church, right? Yeah. Model church. Yeah. So what did they have? Chapter 1, verse 15. This is very important. Okay, let's read together. 3, 2, 1. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the things. Yes. Look at me. Which church is a good church? The church has a faith to the Lord, the church has a love to saints. To God, we need a faith. To brethren, we need love. Okay? This church is good church. And this also should be our target. If our church is like an Ephesus church who has a faith and love, we can see the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is very important. That's why always we should focus on faith, right? Yeah. To God. And also, we need a love to brother and sister, right? Yeah. Am I right? Hmm. To God, we need a faith. To brethren, we need love. That church is good church. Not because of number. So even though numbers of church is a small number, but uh, if they have a good faith and love, God will use that church to enlarge the territory of gospel. Very true. And also, the finally, um, for the work of the Holy Spirit, the what is important? Teaching and learning. Teaching and learning. So if you read the book of Acts, the what did Apostle Paul do? Teaching always. And the what did uh, brother and sister who got saved do? Learning, right? Yeah. So church is a place the where we should learn. Yeah. Continue, right? So uh, learning. The Bible is very important. That's why if you read the act from chapter 1 until 28, you can see the many sermons, right? Many sermons. Many kinds of sermons you can see. Why? Sermons is very, very important. Sermon time is most important. Before, uh, the one the pastor said uh, in Korea, so Filipino like a basketball, right? They like this in the Koreano like a soccer. Anywhere there's a soccer, the, the soccer field. So the one day uh, to uh, United, uh, to the United with the brothers, uh, they had a scheduled uh, soccer playing. Uh, so leader uh, announced bro brothers tomorrow. There will be a soccer game uh, with the brother, brothers. 
uh, let's have a, uh, let's play a soccer. So many brothers, almost brothers, had joined. So after soccer player, he had announced, okay, the, after that there will be fellowship in church. Uh, let's gather together. Not everyone joined. So, uh, so that also way more can be good way uh, to uh, make a more one mind, but that is not uh, best way, right? Yeah. But as a just the more helper, sometimes we need. But the, what should we focus? Also, also. So, uh, if we don't teach, and also if, if brethren don't learn, what will happen? The brethren can be strong. If we don't learn, and if we don't teach, then church can be strong? Church can grow? No. Impossible. We can grow by words of God. We can be strengthened by words of God. Right? We can grow through the words of God. Act chapter 20 verse 31. Act chapter 20 verse 32. Act chapter 20 verse 32. Okay. Okay, last word today. Okay, let's read together. Three, two, one. Yes. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The, what can the build us up? What can build me up? What can the build church up? Hmm? What? What can make you strong? What can uh, help you to grow? The Bible says, Word of God. Because Word of God and Holy Spirit Holy Spirit uh, works through words of God. Okay. So words of God can make uh, upgrading, upgrading my faith, uh, my Christian life. Uh, words of God, very important. So, because of the words of God, what happened? Chapter 6, verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. Chapter 6, verse 7. Okay, let's read together. 3, 2, 1. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. The word of God spread. So what happened? The number of the disciples multiplied. This is the work of the Holy Spirit through the words of God. And then chapter 12. Verse 24. Chapter 12, verse 24. 24. Let's read it together. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Yeah. 
So, uh, the to grow spiritually, the, we should learn the words of God uh, continually. This is a key point. Okay? Yeah, we must not reduce about that. Uh, we should learn continually, regularly, repeatedly. You know, so preacher should preach regularly, repeated, repeatedly, and uh, continually. This is very, very, very important. This is the best way to keep our church. So all of you are Filipino Buddhists. You have a responsibility to keep Filipino church here in Philippines, right? Am I right? Missionary will keep you? If God called every missionary to Korea, we should return. The missionary already had returned from India. Why? No visa anymore. Not alone now. Russia, not alone now. Many nations block missionary to deliver the gospel. If all the Korean missionaries return to Korea, are you ready to keep your church? How to keep? Through money? Through word of God. Through word of God. Why missionaries were sent by God here? To deliver money? No, to deliver word of God. To deliver the words of God powerfully, effectively, we need budget. But even though we have no budget, we must not stop it, right? Words of God can build you up. We sh you should grow. Antioch church grew. So later, they became good church to help another church. So you should help another church later. Are you ready? Can you help another church? You should do. That's why you should grow. If we are ready to help another churches, we can establish many mission branches. But if we are not ready, how can we establish mission branches, right? Very important. How to keep our church through words of God, words of truth. So you should learn always, and you should ask preacher to teach and also, Filipino pastors should teach always. This is the best way to keep the truth in Philippines. Yeah. So, so, we need the cooperation of the, our brethren. If you are willing to learn, preachers also can have a desire to teach. Am I right? But the listeners are not willing. So how about the mind of preachers? So good listeners also can make good preacher. Then good preachers also can make good listener. So we should do together. Do you understand? This is very important. So uh, when I read the Bible, especially book of Acts, uh, because of the earlier church brethren were willing to study the Bible. That's why uh, apostles and preachers also could have a desire to teach more. So, uh, Paul taught, he started to teach from morning until evening, right? Hmm? Why? Brothers, sisters, hold him to teach. Please teach more. Please teach more. Hmm? How good desire. But if we think, please finish, please stop, don't teach, I am tired, I want to go home. If we have a decent mind, is it okay in front of God? We should think about it. So, uh, conclusion. 
How to make good church? There is the answer in the book of Acts. If we do like an act, we can see good church, we can make good church. That, that is true. And how to be good Christian? Please do according to the one you have learned from act. Then you can be good Christian. Already God has shown answer. So book of act is very important. So whenever you have a time, please meditate the book of act. Okay? Do you understand? Okay, thank you for listening. Let's pray. Our heavenly and merciful Father God who loves us, thank you for giving us a great chance to study Bible together with our sincere brothers and sisters uh, who got saved in the name of the Lord. Today that we have learned the book of Acts, and we have learned the many the works of the Holy Spirit through the book of Acts. And also we are really thankful to the Lord because we have a precious time to study the Bible the deeply together with our brethren. So please, the let us continue to study the Bible uh, so that the, we can uh, grow spiritually and also the, we can uh, be strengthened spiritually so that the, we may be used by God uh, for God's more. The Lord, we know that God desires all men to be saved the, here in Philippines. Still, there are many people who are not saved, the many are going to eternal destruction. The, without our help, the, without our preaching, no one can be saved. So please use our brethren as an instrument for gospel. Lord, until you are coming, please let us continue to abide in church. And please let us be united in the name of the Lord. And also please let us rely on the, uh, your grace and love always. So that we can see the great work of the Holy Spirit through our church. Thank you, Lord. We depend everything in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.